Welcome to another edition of Deeper Dive. I'm that host, Jay Walt, and welcome to another weekly podcast. Uh, this is season five, episode 28. And my wonderful co-host Dawn is not available this time. So as always, we've been tag teaming. So I thank her for last week and I'm going this week. So continue to keep her in your prayers and her family. Thank you so much for what you do, Dawn. You are amazing. We want to thank all our podcast listeners for taking the time out to listen to us today. We truly appreciate this, and we hope that you get something out each podcast. Uh, and as always, you can contact us via WhatsApp at 954-388-8780, or you can catch us on uh, plantationsca.tv. And guess who's back for a third visit? We uh-huh. have today. <laughs> you you can tell by the laugh that is our associate pastor, <laughs> Latoya Forbes, aka Fortune Five Hundred. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Always a pleasure being with you and uh, your co-host. Who I'm gonna miss her tonight. Dawn, we miss you. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah, she's the best co-host ever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking the time out for that as as well. I know you're busy. As you just said, you just got our meeting with the mm-hmm. pastor. So we want to thank you for taking the time. Um, as we always do, we start off with a word of prayer and we'll be on the way. Amen. Father God, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us, Lord. We're not worthy, Lord, but your mm-hmm. grace and mercy abound. Continue to bless us, Lord, through this podcast. Thank you for all the components that make things possible for your glory. You, Once again, we ask this word to go out to anyone someone anywhere that can receive the Holy Spirit and thank you for your son's death on the cross. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. All thank right. You. Thank you. Now, since you, before we get started, we want to let everybody know this is your third podcast to keep the record. My third. <laughs> yes. Remember, this is a second as pastor. The first, yeah. you were introduced. Now your family. Amen. Um, I want to thank the, you did a wonderful baby dedication uh, for, I think it was a baby girl, uh, Evelina. Evelina, right. And I think the baby boy was Connor, or was it old Connor? Connor. Connor, good, good, good. Try this, but I want to get it right now. Um, we, also had a, we also had a special uh, pastor, a special guest pastor, Pastor Gregory. Yes. Where was he from? Where was he from? He's from Jamaica. Okay. All mm-hmm. right. Wonderful prayer. At the, at the altar call. So we thank him for that. Indeed. All right, let's, yeah, let's get to it. Uh, come out of Lodi Bar. And so how did you come up with this title, sermon, sermon title? <laughs> well, like I told you before, I'm, I'm, uh, my week, my, I'm weak. My, one of my weak areas is really giving my sermons a title. So mm-hmm. I usually write a sermon and then I title it. Okay. So I, 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 a few years ago, I read this passage and uh, the story is very meaningful to me. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it takes place in this town called Lodi Bar. So mm-hmm. out of the focus of this town, I decided to coin the sermon, having been led by the Holy Spirit to be entitled come out of Lodi bar. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think I've heard that in the Bible, you know, when come on, I read the reading. I'm like, what is this place called? <laughs> it's a, said, okay. it's, it's, yeah. Not a lot of people know the story or even, even if they know the story, they might, might've overlooked the name of the town Lodi bar. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So let's go back. We're speaking from Second Samuel, ninth chapter, verse one through five. Yes. Um, we have Saul, who's the king of mm-hmm. uh, Israel, and then of course he's in battle with the Philistines. Yes. Um, but we find out that at this time, Jonathan, his son, mm-hmm. forms a pact with the very, very young David. Talk about that. This covenant, this brotherhood covenant that he <laughs> forms with him. Uh, sure. So Jonathan and David form this covenant that is based on love, mm-hmm. mutual love between both of them. Um, you know, um, Jonathan said he loved David unto his own soul. Mm-hmm. So this friendship was formed uh when Jonathan saw 
the anointing when you read first Samuel 18 verse 1 to 5 mm-hmm. When Jonathan sees David returning from the slaughter of the Philistines, he sees in this young man great potential. He sees the anointing. He yeah. sees that this is a young man called for purpose. Mm-hmm. So he immediately begins to invest in him. He immediately begins to support him. And so he covers him with his robe and he gives him his armor, even his sword and bow and his belt around his waist. That says a lot. (laughs) It says a lot. It says a lot. lot. Yes. It says a lot. And I am really amazed by this because like I said in the sermon, Jonathan is maybe in in his 50s and David is just a youth. Uh, Some Mm -hmm. scholars put him at the age of 15. Some say under 20 to be more, you know, uh, to, to ensure that they're not over guessing his age too much. And yet he, he takes him as his equal and not only his equal, he even promotes him later by saying, my father knows that you will become king. And and I, your second. <laughs> mm. And, mm. you know, if anyone should have been king, it should have been Jonathan. Fair enough. He's the heir. He's uh, on <laughs> the bloodline. Right. So that takes a lot of humility and it takes uh, a lot of being led by the spirit of God to recognize the will of God mm-hmm. and to be humble enough to accept that this is the person that God has chosen. And so it's a beautiful, loving friendship. And later, I think David says that the love that he had for Jonathan was even stronger than the love for a woman. And I know a lot of people twist that statement. But yeah, I'm sure they would. But anyone, when you think about what the role that Jonathan has played in David's young life mm-hmm. and the, the, the two t- twice or more times that he delivered him and protected him from the yeah. attack of his father. And and I can see why in return, David loved this man so much who had also loved him of 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 equal uh, amount that so the love was fervent on both sides i wish i wish that all of us could experience that kind of love where someone loves us so much to mm-hmm. to assist us to be on the platform that god has prepared for us that's awesome i mean to have a sense that's a definitely a ride or die without a doubt <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but, but but let's go more into uh, Samuel or uh, Saul. Now here comes here comes jealousy. Now mm-hmm. you know here's some jealousy. Now now he goes after David and all these other things. Um, I just I, I mean how how could Jonathan actually say that? You know to Saul. I mean he, he would not know that he would get up. He would get jealous about this, knowing that because of the anointing he sees on David. Well, one of the things that kind of contributed to Saul's um, jealousy was the praise that David was receiving. Mm. Saul has killed his thousands. Thousands, yes. David has killed his ten thousand. Ten thousand. So, so, you know, when you're called and gifted, your gifts will always make room for you. Right. And one of the ways to know how gifted and purposed you are by God is people will affirm that gift in you. Mm. So you have people affirming David. You have persons praising David. And Saul has been on the throne long enough to know that the kind of attention that David is getting Mm -hmm. would, would jeopardize uh, would, would jeopardize him to a certain extent. But if he was really confident in his leadership, mm-hmm. he really should not feel threatened by a shepherd boy. <laughs> he shouldn't, yeah, yeah. I mean, because he ended up made him head of his army. Right, he made him so, head of his army. Yeah. So he saw his giftedness as well. But like I said, the people were praising David. The people were loving David. The attention Mm -hmm. that rightly belonged to the king 
was resting on this young man and his response was uh, jealousy yeah. and it led him to the point where he wanted to neutralize yeah. uh, the power and uh, that God had placed in David. He wanted to neutralize him. Yeah. And it's not the first we've seen that with the dreamer, Joseph. Yes. Right. So this mm -hmm. is not the first time yes. we're seeing this kind of reaction because it's it's such a fleshly, carnal reaction. It is. And it is. I remember, I remember this, this uh, man telling this story that he was invited to, as a guest speaker, the keynote speaker at mm. a conference and opening night, his it was packed where he was presenting, mm. jam packed. And he gave his sermon the second night, he got up to speak and the hall was like, most of the hall was empty. And he turned really? to say, what's going on? And they said, listen, there is a young preacher tearing down the place he spoke <laughs> last night and word went out that he is hot right and the, the the older man said he felt something like bubbling up inside Ooh. of him like mm. he was saying to himself but i am the one and they brought me here and he said when he realized that was happening to him he went down on his knees and he began to pray for the young preacher that Amen. god use the young preacher that Amen. god will bless him that god will bless the word and and so all of us we're human but yes. when we see where our humanness and and the flesh is taking us yes. we need to arrest that the through, the of of the the Holy Ghost, yes. through the power of the holy spirit through the power of the word and through the power of prayer if this man had not fallen on his knees and, yeah. and 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 prayed he too might have gone down the road of of feeling resentful feeling jealous because he is not getting the accolade and attention and praise that he thought he deserved you know mm -hmm, so we mm -hmm. all have to be careful yeah that is true that is true <laughs> well here we are now Saul goes to war with his three sons yeah and sad news Jonathan is one of them yeah. And of course, God did not approve it. And so we know there was son. And now the Philistines are coming into Israel to invade. And now let's go to now we find out that uh, Solomon, uh, Solomon had a son. Yes. Uh, my, my fifth chef. Uh, from, from, uh, and of course, Jonathan. the made believe. Uh, I'm sorry. Jonathan had a son. Yeah, Jonathan. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Jonathan had a son. Yes. Um, and of course, now they have to leave the area and leave out and then move to this area, like you said, called Lodibar. But mm -hmm. you had mentioned that the baby was dropped by yeah. the maid, which made him a lame feet. Yeah. So talk about this place, Lodibar. Well, what is, what is, that's a breakdown. What does it actually really mean? Okay, well, Debar means a word or thing. Mm -hmm. So in front of Debar, there is a prefix, which is a negator. So lo Debar means no word or no thing. Okay. It, it also means a lacking good pasture. Mm -hmm. So Lodi Bar is an insignificant nothing town in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> mm. Wow. Right. And uh, they, it's also compared to a place where there is no pasture, no mm -hmm. green pasture, no place for rest. Mm -hmm. so Lodi Bar is a restless place. It's a place that is isolated. It's, it's lawlessness. Uh -huh. It's poor. It's wretched. It's a ghetto. It's a place of refuge for criminals. Mm. There is law in Lodi Bar, uh, crime rate is high, um, mm. the police don't want to go there, it's easy to get into Lodi Bar, but it's hard to come out, it's mm. a place where everybody minds their own business, uh, nobody <laughs> sees it, you, you, you better say, you know, I, nobody sees anything there, nobody <laughs> witnesses anything. <laughs> well, gotcha, just mind your business, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a place of lawlessness. So, definitely. So, okay, so now, 
uh, my favorite chef is growing up in this area. Yeah. And he's adjusting to the ordinary life, which is not good. Right. So talk to us about this state of mind that he was in. Well, like I said, um, he is in this town, uh, but he's still aware he's in the house of of Ziba, Ziba. Mm -hmm. So he's not living in his own house. Yes. Uh, and so, but he is very much aware of his history. He knows that his grandfather was king of Israel. Mm -hmm. He knows that his father was a prince and next in line for the throne. But he understands the hostile climate that is existing because there is a new king on the throne. Yes. And, and and so he understands the culture that when a king ascends the throne and we see it in in when Solomon was ascending the throne, his father sat down and made a list of names of people to deal with. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> and, and even the scripture says when he finally dealt with the last one. Who, who who he 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 made a deal with him he's like listen if you stay in your in in your residence and you don't leave you're safe and the man said it's fair but then i think his one of his horses or a donkey or something went, went missing and he went to go and find it and word came to solomon that mm -hmm. he had ventured out of his residence and, and you know what that means he's slain right <laughs> yeah and right after that the scripture says the everything uh the the kingdom was now secure in in solomon's hand so <laughs> We know historically that usually it, it is appropriate for the ascending king to deal with his enemies, yes. deal with those who are a threat to the throne. So mm -hmm. it's under that threat that Meshiboseth is hiding in Lodibar. Yes. And he's isolated from the other remaining members of the family that might be scattered elsewhere. He's isolated from them and he's living in secrecy. Mm -hmm. So no one is supposed to know about him because the more exposure he has, the more chance, uh, yes chance he has to be discovered mm -hmm. and to you know to be wiped out so it, it's a lonely it's a lonely uh road or journey that he's on uh it's it, it, there's a lot of pain there there's a lot of unfulfilled desires dreams and things that could have been accomplished had his life gone in a different direction. But yeah. at the same time, he's there. He's accepted that this is this is my normal life. He's gone on to marry. He's gone on to have a son. And so he's making the best of a bad situation. Yeah, yeah. I could understand that. And and um, we do that. We we yeah. often do that, you know. Yeah, we, we 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 try to normalize and and settle ourselves in sometimes the most hostile and toxic environments, and it becomes our normal. Yeah, yeah, I understood. And like I said, this the abnormal becomes normal. Yeah, um, and, and, and that's you know, so he's, part of it. Right. So talk to me about now, David, how David got word. He asked if he asked the key, the key question and that question that uh, David asked. Yeah, he asked, is there anyone left from the house of Saul that I may show kindness for the sake of Jonathan? That's yes. what he asked. Yes, that, that's just wonderful just to say that. And, and then they said there was one. Yes. Yeah, that was one. So once he found Meshavoseth, uh, Meshavoseth, sorry, um, then he told him that he could dine with him almost any time, dine with the king's table. Right. So he he actually called for him. Yes, since the entourage. So he sent uh, Ziba for him. And so... Um, I love that part because when you're in the Lodi bar of sin, it's just like 
you 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 have a, a health condition mm -hmm. you have an emergency and you call the ambulance you call the ambulance because you can't make it to the hospital and you have persons that are affected by their situation affected by sin to mm -hmm. the point where they need an ambulance they need assistance they need someone to come and rescue them yes right? So, yes, in the context of Christ coming to redeem the world, and we see that in John 3, verse 16, which to me, uh, it's such a familiar verse that sometimes it loses its impact. But what is taking place is God says, because of my love for the world, because of my love for you, I'm giving my son, I'm sending you an ambulance. I'm sending you a rescue. Yes. Man refuge. You yes. can't save yourself. You're too weak. You're near death. I'm sending someone that's going to give you life support. That's going to help you so that you can make it to the hospital so you can get the help that you need. Amen. And so it, it's really such a beautiful, remarkable story that shows how much God cares for us, how much he wants to take us out of our Lodi bar and give us the liberation, give us the relief, give us the release that we are so desperately in need of. I can't tell you how many persons came after church crying, tearing. They said, well, I, it, they, when they share with you their struggle and what they're going through yes. it, just, it just moves me it moves me because you see people dressed up you see people smiling but you don't know what they're going through and out you of don't. this i saw that so many people were in pain so many people are trapped in some form of lodi bar and they need the hand of god to rescue them and guess what we are God's hands. <laughs> of course, yes. That's how people get healed through other people's <laughs> testimonies and other people's uh, issues and how we get people healed through your testimonies. Through your testimonies, through your witnessing. Yes, through your, definitely. Through your telling your story of what God has done for you through the preaching of the word. And Amen. a lot of people don't understand because, you know, just recently someone asked me, Pastor, is the spiritual enough when people need help? psychologically, uh, emotionally. And I think a lot of people don't understand that when, when Christ said the word is truth and it is life, yeah. people don't necessarily understand that there is potency in the word. Yes. That word that we cast aside, when you read it, it has healing properties in it for your body, your mind, and your soul. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's wonderful. That's just wonderful. So we do not have to stay in a loady bar situation. There is, uh, there is help, like David did for Mephibosheth and his family. Amen. Amen. And Jesus Christ, Jesus, and this is a small uh, scale compared to what Christ did. He did his on a global scale. On a so, global scale. <laughs> yes. Yes, he did. So that's a wonderful thing. So you know, you know, I have to ask you this question. <laughs> well, should I say, tell us about the Big Brother blackmailer story? <laughs> I thought that would get you. <laughs> you know, uh, someone, someone told me how. Well, a, a couple of persons told me how their young, their young person, their youth, their child, how much they are enjoying these stories. And <laughs> one mother told me her daughter was a greeter. Mm. And she was like, I can't stay at the door. I need to come inside now and hear the sermon. And <laughs> I, I realized that uh, the element of story, and that's why Jesus used so many parables he did. in his presentations, because the stories just bring to life sometimes it helps to personify the the word you know in in a way that hits closer to home mm -hmm. and so I, I shared this story about uh being blackmailed by my brother who i loved so much <laughs> and the, the thing about the story is he spent our bus fare mm. He made me end up walking these miles with him through shortcuts, through bushes, through rough terrain. 
And when I found myself not being able to go any further because I, I needed to use a bathroom so desperately, it was his idea that I used the bushes. <laughs> it was his idea that wow. I used a uh, paper to clean myself. And and everything was okay. Everything was okay. I survived the experience, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, then a few days later, like the Sunday when we we're enjoying our Sunday dinner. Yeah. And I, and I said in the sermon, I was just about to wrap my lips around my chicken. <laughs> Comes over my shoulder and says, give me your chicken. Or I'm going to tell mommy what oh you my goodness. in the bushes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Black <laughs> Listen, but listen, isn't that what the enemy does to us? He yes. tells us all these yes. lies. And then when we follow him, he turns out and he uses it against us. Yes, you went too far and you, can, you can't turn back. <laughs> and, and you know what? I noticed a difference between when we obey God and when mm -hmm. we follow the devil, yes. when we follow the devil, whatever he gives us, there's always a price to pay. Yes, it is. More than we can pay, more likely. More than we can pay. But yes. when we follow the will of God, when we follow the truth of God's word, we are liberated. We Amen. are set free. <laughs> free indeed. <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. I love it. I have to remember that I had a cousin come up somewhat like that. Um, it, just a long story short, um, I, every time I go down to the country in Carolina, I would mm -hmm. go with a fresh pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow my cousin had the same shoes, uh, shoe size as me. Mm. And, and they didn't have any shoes, like talking about it. They had shoes, but they played in the yard, so there was no shoes to be needed. And somehow, you know, being, you know, family and caring, every time my mother comes home or come to pick me up, where's your shoes? Oh, I gave it to cousin, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, what? She's like, no. She said, I don't spend my hard earned money to get you shoes like that. Family or no family. Mm. But he, 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 he made it seem like, you know, he really needed it. And come to find out, he really didn't. He's just, he <laughs> liked the shoes. <laughs> he liked the shoes. And I'm looking at him like, no. So I would have to tell him, or my mother, if she would go tell her mother, tell his mother, do not let Joe I bring the shoes, bring them back. <laughs> That's it. No black man. But, you know, that 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 was, you know, I was just being young and naive at the time. So, but yeah, those things do happen. And it does happen. And family will do it to you. <laughs> but you know what? One key thing I forgot to say in the sermon. Sure. When, when I told my mom, my mom, because the power that my brother had over me was that I was so ashamed of what mm. happened mm. that I was willing to give up my toys, my food, my money mm -hmm. just to hide my shame. Wow. When I told my mom when I told her my story and told her everything, mm -hmm. one of the things she said to me was, don't you ever let anybody have that power over you. Yes. And I, I think sometimes we give our power away. We do. And, uh, there are a lot of people suffering and they feel powerless. Mm -hmm. And um, because you're isolated in your suffering. And, and when you're suffering, you think that you are alone. You think that you're the only person going through this pain. But mm. the truth is, you're not alone. Be you're true. not alone. And the moment I went to my mom and told her everything, I felt this weight. I felt this weight, this burden lifted. Right. So the very thing that I was afraid of mm -hmm. actually became the thing that delivered me. <laughs> mm. And that's something. Think about that towards salvation. Mm. When you actually are giving, you laying everything down, saying, no matter what, uh, my, what my brother may do to me or whatever. I'm giving it to the one that could free me from everything. Amen. And, you, and, he, and your mother did that. She freed he, you. He said it. He says it. If you confess your sins, yes. I am faithful and just to forgive you. 
That's right. And like also, it never happened. Pardon me? Like it never happened. Like it never happened. And oftentimes yes. we're afraid to go to God and we think that God gets tired of us coming to him. Yes. But he doesn't. He does not. He knows how weak we are. He knows how frail we are. So you may have uh, uh, you may have, you know, gone back on the things that you said you'd never do again. But even so, still go to him. Still yes. go to God. Still talk about talk to God. Talk about your situation. Talk about what went wrong. Talk about how you're feeling. And as you talk to your creator, God, you will find the burden that you're carrying is lifted. You will have the peace of God. And in his presence, that's where it all takes place, the healing uh, that we need and the healing that he's so willing to give us. Of course. You don't have to roll in the dirt. You don't have to scratch yourself. You don't you don't have to tear your, your clothes. Mm -hmm. You just need to talk to him. That's what I did with my mom. I just talked to her. And that's yes. what God wants us to do. Come and talk to me. Don't be afraid. Don't wait. And don't ever think that God is tired of listening to you. That's right. He loves us. Well, on that note, definitely no loaded bar. <laughs> None whatsoever. And you know what? I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you the truth. Yes. I've had my loady bars. I've mm. had my loady bars. And I remember as I was putting this sermon together, my prayer was, God, as you have delivered me from my loady bar, I'm asking you to deliver someone from their loady bar. Yes. So I am not just talking about the loady bar the mindset of loaded bar and the loaded bars that people carry around with them. I am one that has that that God has delivered. And out of my deliverance, I am now shouting and declaring emphatically and joyfully that as God has delivered me from my Lodi bars, he can also deliver you. It does not matter how strong that addiction is. It doesn't matter how long the enemy has had a hold on you. God is a chain breaker. It Amen. doesn't matter how long this Love it. has been in your generation. God mm -hmm. can break the chain. God has that power. He That power resides in him, not in ourselves, but in God's ability to deliver us and not only deliver us from ourselves, but mm -hmm. deliver us from our enemies. And like I said in my story, I don't know how my mother fixed my brother, but I'm reminded when David says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence That's of just my enemy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, brother. Huh? <laughs> I said, sorry about that, brother. So that just tells me mm -hmm. that even though I'm arrayed and my enemies are all around me, because mm -hmm. God is on my side, I can sit down and I can enjoy this meal because God is taking care of my enemies. <laughs> <laughs> that is wonderful. Love to hear that. Love to hear that. That is so wonderful. I tell you. Amen. Well, Pastor, thank you for taking the time. It's always a pleasure Amen. Uh, listening to a wonderful message. So um, I just wanted to thank you for landing at Plantation. That was God ordained. God ordained. You with us. And we thank you for your family. We thank you for your ministry and whatever else you're going to do. Um, I just wanted to say something. My wife told me in her one of her sermons, whatever has been going on for years in your life can happen in moments. In moments. So <laughs> that's a true statement. So as we always say, please leave us out in the word of prayer. We thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your ability and power to take us out of our Lodi bars. We are thankful that we didn't die in Lodi bar. Yes. You extended an uh, arm uh, of rescue and we grabbed hold of it. And you held on to us, even when we couldn't hold on to you. And God, we just want to thank you. 
thank you, God, for taking us out of our Lodi bar. And if there is anyone, Lord, who is in Lodi bar, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that as you send your Holy Spirit and send your angels and send people that you use, Lord, to rescue them, I pray that they will respond to your rescue in a positive way and that they'll say yes to you and that they will humble themselves as Meshiboseth humbled himself as he stood bowed in the presence of David. Lord, in our humility, you promise to exalt us and you promise God that you'll place us right beside you at, at your table. And we are so thankful that to as many to that have believed to them you have given the power to become sons and daughters of God. So Lord, thank you that just as David made Mephibosheth's son and joint heir, you are willing to do the same for us. Lord, we thank you. We magnify your name. We praise you, God. And Lord, we're at the table and our lame feet are exposed, God, Amen. so that Amen. others can see, God, what you have delivered us from. And we thank you, God. We thank you. We praise you. We glorify and we look forward to day, the day when we shall sit at your table and, and dine with you, never more to part, never more to part. Thank Ever. you, Lord, for hearing our prayer, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor, thank you so much. It's been wonderful. And thank you. you. Always a pleasure. Appreciate that. And I hope you enjoy the rest of you with your family. God bless you. We'll, we'll see you, uh, God willing, uh, the upcoming health fair. Yes, sure absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> so we're looking forward to that. That's a big thing here for first time on, on our grounds at Plantation. So I will see you there, God willing. And you're wonderful. Have a blessed week. You too. Thank you.